that they have to experience another quarter of a million planes a year going over their heads. And in my view, in Haykan's view, uh, that cannot be justified. I think there comes a time in any uh, business, in any industry, that depending on, regardless of how many jobs they're providing, if the environmental downsides are so unacceptable, one's actually got to say, enough is enough. And my view is that uh, we've reached that stage uh, at Heathrow. I think it's important equally to reassure people that if a third runway is not built, we are not seeing, going to see job losses at Heathrow. A two-runway airport is going to continue to be a cash cow for Heathrow Airport. It's going to continue to be one of Europe's and the world's major airports. It's going to continue to be a major employer uh, in West London and further afield. In, in, in Haken, we're not advocating a runway goes elsewhere. That's not our job. But an interesting report was done by uh, the boroughs of Slough, Ealing and Hounslow, which found that even if a second runway was built at Gatwick, the impact on jobs that he throw would be, and I quote the word, negligible. So there are some scary stories put across that if a third runway is not built, it will be doom and gloom for employment in West London. Really, the facts do not bear that out. So, I'm going to finish in a, in a minute, so I think we probably want to have a bit of a conversation. So, <coughs> if I'm saying that really it is difficult on environmental and social grounds, and I think I'm stress the social as well, because this is not just about green issues, it's about green issues, it's about climate issues, it's about air pollution issues, but it's also, in my view, about noise going over, yes, some of the wealthiest parts of, uh, uh, of London, but also some of the poorest areas of London. And if you have relentless 40 planes an hour going over your home in, in social housing, and that happens in many places, what chances have you of moving away? You're stuck there. So I think there are equity reasons why, despite the jobs that are there, <coughs> Expansion Heathrow is not just enough. I think we do need in aviation and looking at aviation policy to look a little bit wider. This, this, is, this is my last point. Kerry is absolutely right to identify the subsidy that the aviation industry gets. Uh, it's about £9 billion pounds a year through no VAT on tickets, through uh, 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 no uh, fuel, uh, tax on aviation. To subsidise, to argue that some form of equitable tax is imposed is not, in my view, anti-aviation. That's not where Haken's coming from. It is simply arguing uh, for a for aviation to pay a fair and full share of its taxation. If that happened, we would see we'd be able to manage demand, and if we we're able to manage demand then the call for new runways at Heathrow or elsewhere would be much less strident, would be much less justified. And that, in my view, uh, would be good for uh, the environment, it would be good for the equity reasons that I've mentioned, it would be good for climate. And that sort of restriction, that justifiable restriction on what is essentially a dirty industry, could then uh, uh, act as a trigger to for investment in cleaner industries, uh, in climate-friendly industries, uh, and, uh, and I think that ultimately is the way forward. It's not the immediate solution, and that's more difficult. But in the long term, I think that has to be the way forward uh, for Heathrow and for aviation and for employment. Thanks.